Legacy Rescue Fu Arc Chapter 43, Power Unmatched Previously, Nu, Shibuki, Fu thought sobbing as massive amount of chakra surged through her body. Kakuzu and Haydn stopped talking and turned their attention towards Fu. You bastards, I'm going to kill you both, Fu shouted as purple chakra surrounded her and she entered her version 2 cloak. Now Kakuzu and Haydn watched in wonder as a purple sphere completely surrounded Fu. The ground was slight shaking and the winds were rustling through the plain field. Suddenly the whole sphere turned pitch black and large beam of energy was shot into the sky. That can't be good, Kakuzu thought as he shielded his face from the scorching winds that Fu's transformation was releasing. Arrrrrrrrr. A massive roar was heard from inside the sphere. Both Akatsuki members flinched when they felt a massive shockwave that made the earth shake. The black sphere started receding and Kakuzu could now see two glowing green eyes behind the small layer that was now the sphere. Boom. The black sphere suddenly exploded outwards blasting everything away. Kakuzu and Haydn were blown away as a small crater formed from Fu's transformation. There, in the middle of the crater, was Fu completely surrounded in a dark blue chakra cloak. She had five tails swinging wildly and wings protruded from her back. She was on all four like some hungry lion ready to pounce on his dinner. Around her blue shell was a protective layer of bones. The bones covered about half of her body. The bones were shaped like claws in her legs and around her head was a white cranium with two massive horns. Even through her helmet, of sorts, the two green eyes remained glowing in the background and shining through the bone structure. Fu, are you in there? Chomei asked her host. Chomei wondered how did Fu manage to pull so much chakra from her since the seal was still intact. Arrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
his head not too far away and his torso nowhere to be seen, it was completely obliterated. Kakuzu had his eyes widened at the state of his partner. Haydn was supposed to be immortal and indestructible. He had increased regeneration that allowed any wound to heal in a matter of seconds. But now, he wasn't so sure of his immortality. Kakuzu focused his eyes on his target. From inside the smoke, the same two green eyes were seen glowing. Fu started walking out of the crater as her state became more and more visible. She didn't suffer any damage from any of Kakuzu's attack or for being in the sight of the explosion. The only problem this time was a sixth tail that had just been formed. Kakuzu had sweat rolling down his face as he noticed the predicament he was in. His partner had been obliterated and now he was facing a six-tailed Jinchuriki who wasn't pleased with him. Even Kakuzu couldn't hope to withstand or even block a mildly powered-tailed best bomb. Remain calm, you still have your five hearths, Kakuzu thought as he planned the best he could against his target who right now didn't seem like some weak girl. Oh I Kakuzu, Haydn screamed and Kakuzu's eyes widened. Kakuzu slowly turned to his right to see Haydn's head screaming towards him. Why why you're still alive, Kakuzu stuttered looking at the state of his partner. I can't die you bastard, Haydn shouted slowly regenerating. He had already regained his vocal cords as his neck was already reformed. Stitch my arms and legs back together while I heal, Haydn said and Kakuzu got to do just that. He had his four masks keep Fu busy while he stitched what remained of Haydn back together. 2. Haydn's head was on the ground with two legs and half of his arm. Kakuzu watched in amazement as Haydn's neck was growing downwards. Suddenly the neck expanded and started forming the shoulder as it connected to the chunk of the surviving half of his arm, while the other arm was being rebuilt from nothing. Since the pieces were stitched they just fell into their place, so to speak. Arrrrrrr. Fu wasn't happy that her victim survived her attack. Fu roared and all of the masks were blasted back. Kakuzu turned his attention towards Fu who was running towards him. Fu raised one of her paws and slammed it on the ground making a huge shock wave that pushed everything away. Kakuzu flew back while Haydn just tumbled through the ground as he was still healing. Futon, Atsugai, pressurized wind bomb, the light blue mask sent a compressed air ball towards Fu. The ball exploded on impact and Fu was sent tumbling through the ground and crashed into a tree. They were already out of the village since their fight began. Fu shook her head as she got up to see the grinning face of Haydn. I can't die bitch, Haydn shouted at her while laughing maniacally. Haydn raised his scythe and brought it down as hard as he could. Clang! The scythe collided with her defensive bones. Haydn's scythe didn't even scratch her defenses. Fu swinged one of her tails and Haydn's was thrown backwards. Fu turned her attention towards Kakuzu who was standing still with his masks around him. Two masks on each side with him in the middle. Katan, Karyudan, Fire Dragon. Swaytan, Suryudan, Water Dragon. Dotan, Doryudan, Earth Dragon. Futan, Furyudan, Wind Dragon. Raitan, Raryudan, Lightning Dragon. Each mask charged and unleashed its own version of the Elemental Dragon. The five elemental dragons rose into the sky coiling themselves together. The wind dragon powered the fire dragon. The water dragon powered up the lightning dragon. The dragons roared and blurred towards Fu who couldn't dodge in time. Boom! A big explosion was felt and Kakuzu smirked knowing that not even Fu could escape that combination without suffering any damage. He had to thank Senju Naruto for showing him the lightning dragon all those years ago. Maybe he could thank him in person if he ever got the task to capturing the Nine Tails. The smoke started clearing and Fu was struggling to get up. All of the bones were cracked and some even gone. Even with her chakra-reinforced blue shell, 
anyone could burn marks from the explosion. Haydn now, Kakuzu shouted as Haydn appeared next to Fu and brought his scythe down right on her burned parts. Haydn chose the burned chunks because it was where Fu was more fragile. Fu was able to dodge slightly and avoid being completely pierced by his scythe but Haydn managed to cut her deep enough to draw blood. Haydn laughed as he jumped back. He brought his scythe to his mouth and licked the small amount of blood there was on the tips of his weapon. Slowly but surely, Haydn's skin started turning pitch black with white drawing of his bones. Haydn cut open his wrist and let blood flow out into the ground. Haydn drew a triangle inside a circle and stepped into the middle of both. Haydn took out a spear and shouted, For you Jashin-sama, and pierced right through his chest, puncturing his right lung and nearly missing his hearth. Arrrrrrr. Fu roared in pain as he dropped to the ground and writhed in pain. She roared as she tried to stand back up but to no avail. Fu started losing her cloak as the bones disintegrated into dust and her tail started receding. Oh lord, the pain, it feels good, Haydn said as he took pleasure in the pain coursing through his body. In the meantime, Fu's version 2 cloak completely dissipated leaving her cloak transparent. Anyone could see the horrible state she was in. A large hole in her shoulder that was sizzling as Komi's chakra focused solely on it. Her skin was blood red meaning that it had been completely burned off. Suddenly the whole cloak vanished and Fu was left on the ground panting and barely conscious. I'm an idiot, why did I lose myself, Fu thought to herself. She gave in to her anger and could have gone on a rampage destroying everything, even her village. What a mess, Kakuzu said looking at the battlefield. Everything in a 100-meter radius was gone and replaced with nothing but death. There was no plant life, no nothing. There was nothing but destruction. Why you, Fu started saying making Kakuzu turn to her, why you have made a G-grave mistake, Fu said, chuckling weakly, slowly opening her eyes. You are all gonna die, Fu said making Kakuzu raise an eyebrow. And what mistake would that be? Kakuzu asked amused and decided to hear her explanation. You should have knocked me out when you had the chance, Fu shouted and faster than anyone could react it, she took out a three-pronged kunai from her pouch and stabbed it on the ground in front of her. Fu almost buried the kunai to the hilt from the speed and power she put behind it. Kakuzu's eyes widened when he recognized the kunai. He was quickly brought out of his thoughts when the clearing was illuminated with a yellow flash. Once Kakuzu and Haydn regained their vision, Kakuzu's blood ran cold. Senju Naruto was standing in front of them and by the look of his face, he was pissed. His blood-red eyes were glowing and the ground was shaking from his chakra pressure. Moments earlier with Naruto, Kanoha's Academy all right quiet down, Irika said to his class who still continued to make noise. I said settle down, Irika yelled and everyone quickly shut up and sat down. From the hall Naruto chuckled inwards, it looked like Irika still used his trademark jutsu. Now Irika started seeing that the class had calmed down, today is a very special day. Today we have three guests that will be available for question on their shinobi duties and how difficult mission are, Irika said and class started cheering that they wouldn't be listening to Irika for once. If you behave they might show you a few tricks, Irika said and was amused by their reaction. Everyone was giddy to meet these shinobi that would be teaching them instead of learning history or math from Irika. Now without further do I introduce you Sarutobi Kanoamaru, Irika said and Kanoamaru poofed into existence in the middle of class shocking all of the academy students saying that he came from nowhere. Kanoamaru is a genin that graduated just last year and is already signing up for the next Chunin exams, Irika said and the class cheered. Believe it, Kanoamaru shouted pumping his fist into the air. He's kinda cute, Hanabi thought to herself suppressing a blush. That bastard stole my line, Naruto thought towards Kanoamaru, considering putting him in a Tsukuyami as punishment. 
Next we have Senja Naruto, Iruka said and the whole class gasped as Naruto appeared in a yellow flash near Kanoamaru. The girls all had stars in her eyes seeing the gorgeous face of Naruto while boys glared at him. After all, Naruto was good-looking, strong and famous. As you all know Naruto-kun here is a chun-nin, the head of the Senju clan and grandson of our Hokage, Iruka explained and Naruto nodded. And finally we have our final guest. Hataki Kakashi, Iruka said and waited, and waited. Five minutes had passed and there was no smoke and no door opening. I'll write back, Naruto said sighing and vanished in a yellow flash. Iruka sighed knowing that Kakashi still had his nasty habits. Not one minute later, Naruto arrived with Kakashi in tow completely wrapped with rope. Naruto, was this necessary? Kakashi asked as Naruto dropped him to the ground with a thumb sound. Yes, yes it was, Naruto said nodding his head. As I was saying, Hataki Kakashi, one of our best jounins. He is known as the copy ninja Kakashi, the man who knows over a thousand jutsu, Iruka explained and the class got giddy at such shinobi. Too bad neither of them knew that Naruto could defeat Kakashi with a flick of a finger. Now, are there any questions? Iruka asked and the class exploded much to Naruto's amusement. All right, all right settle down. Emi-chan you go, Iruka said and girl nodded in appreciation. Senja-sama, Emi started but got interrupted. Just Naruto will do, Naruto said and the girl shyly nodded. Naruto-san I heard you are quite strong, so why are still a Chun-nin? Emi asked and Iruka was admired as it was a pretty decent question. It's simple really. There are two ways to be promoted to Jounin. You can either get a field promotion based on the reports of your performance or you can take the Jounin exams. The reason I'm still a Chun-nin is because a few weeks ago I returned from a three-year training trip, Naruto explained and Emi nodded happily. Next, Kimi-chan, Iruka said and the boys groaned as Iruka was only picking girls. Kakashi-san how did you get that scar on your eye? Kimi asked and Naruto flinched as he knew the story behind that. Um, Kakashi hummed as he closed his pervert book and gathered his thoughts, it was the first mission after my promotion to Jounin. I got slashed by a sword and ended up blind on this eye, Kakashi explained but Kimi got confused. Blind? But your eye looks fine, Kimi said and Kakashi shifted uncomfortably. One of my teammates died on that mission. His name was Uchiha Abito. He sacrificed his life to save mine and gave me his eye as a gift, Kakashi said sighing and activating his Sharingan for the whole class to see. He gave me his Sharingan so he could see the world through my eyes, Kakashi stated. He was a hero, Kimi said and Kakashi happily nodded. That is the way of the shinobi. Make no mistake, Kakashi started in a serious tone, death is a constant. The only way to survive and be strong is to form bonds. Train and fight for those you hold dear and you will achieve power beyond your wildest dreams, Kakashi said and Naruto nodded while Kanoamaru was drawing blanks. All right, Iruka said breaking everyone from the sour mood. Next, Jairukuen, Iruka said. Finally, Jairu shouted much to Iruka's amusement. Hey brat, how old are you? Jairu blurted out towards Kanoamaru. Who are you calling a brat, brat? Kanoamaru asked fuming. You, Jairu replied, you look weak, I bet I could take you on, Jairu replied standing from his chair. Bring it on, Kanoamaru said as he placed his hands on a T-formation ready to form shadow clones. Enough, Iruka stopped the growing argument and advanced towards another student. Hanabi-chan you're up, Iruka said and Hanabi nodded. So she's Hinata-chan younger sister. They kinda look alike. Naruto thought to himself before Hanabi drew his attention. How is Hinata so strong? 
Hanabi asked and the whole class went silent. Some students muttered around asking who this Hinata was. I don't intend to badmouth your father if I can call him that, Naruto started and Hanabi flinched. The Jukan style you are learning never suited her. The Jukan style was built to work around a steady stance with quick counter-strikes. However, Hinata-chan is a water-natured user. She's supposed to flow and avoid her enemy like water finding its path. Naruto explained and Hanabi listened. As such, Hinata-chan would never truly master the original Jukan. Your father never noticed this or just didn't want to see it, so he kept pushing her towards something she would never be able to achieve. With each failure Hayashi grew angrier at her until he was finally sick of it and expelled Hinata from the clan, Naruto said and the class gasped turning to Hanabi who shrunk in her seat. You asked me how she is so strong, Naruto said gathering his thoughts, she was always strong to begin with. She had very high potential but was being limited by your father's strict rules. Once we began training together and with a bit of incentive and compliments she found her way and built herself to all she is today, Naruto replied smiling. He really loves her, Kakashi replied looking towards his little brother. You should swing by the Senju compound, she would be happy to see you, Naruto said and Hanabi could only nod. Excuse me, Hisao interrupted and gathered the attention of everyone, who is this Hinata? Hisao asked. That would be Hyuga Hinata, Hanabi's older sister and my girlfriend, Naruto explained and sighed when he heard the pouts from some girls. I think I know a way to rid them of their fangirl ways, Naruto thought to himself as he flared his chakra. Why did you flare your chakra Naruto? Kakashi asked confused but Naruto waved him off. A few seconds later everyone felt chakra usage and they could see water swirling in the middle of the room. Hinata had just arrived via water shunshin. You called Naruto-kun? Hinata asked in a soft voice. She was wearing a white medic garb that ended up just below her knees. The coat was buttoned up and looked like it might burst open from her bust. She had her hair trapped in a long ponytail. Naruto brought his hand to his nose as he didn't expect her to look so hot in a simple medic outfit. You like it Naruto-kun? Hinata cutely asked bringing a finger to her chin. Thumb. Naruto dropped to the ground like a sack of potatoes with blood running from his nose. Hinata giggled and crouched to pick her boyfriend up when Naruto awakened and grabbed her. He leaned up and whispered, save that outfit for later, and Hinata blushed but quickly let it go as they were in front of kids. Naruto cleared his throat and the blood on his nose and turned to face the class once again. Now I would like to introduce you to Hyuga Hinata, my girlfriend, Naruto said and the boys had stars in their eyes. Now girls look carefully at her, Naruto said and Hinata raised an eyebrow at what he was doing. She didn't exactly like being on the spotlight. Isn't she gorgeous? Naruto rhetorically asked and the class could only nod. Even Kakashi, Iruka and Kanoamaru nodded. Now, what if I told you that she can give the Hokage a run for her money, Naruto said and the class had their eyes widened. This girl of seventeen was stronger than the Hokage? She's the living proof that you can dedicated your life to being a shinobi while still being beautiful, Naruto said pecking the cheek on his girlfriend. Naruto looked backwards and Iruka sent him a thankful nod seeing as Naruto tried to get rid of the fan girls. He's right, Nechan is so pretty, Hanabi thought as she decided she would definitely get to know her better. She was everything Hanabi wanted to be, strong and beautiful. Thank you for participating Hinata-chan, Naruto said and Hinata was in a pickle. Naruto had basically flaunted her to these kids like a piece of meat but she knew he intended to bring these girls out of their ways so she would forgive him. See at home Naruto-kun, Hinata said and disappeared in a water shunshin. Now, next question, Irika said and the class raised their arms once again. 
Keo-chan, Irika said and the girl squealed loudly. Dear Kami, Kakashi thought when he started hearing a small ringing in his ears. That girl would put Sakura to shame, Irika thought sadly. Sakura was the first one to go. Can I touch your fan? Keo asked but Naruto frowned. This fan is very special. Kanoamaru suddenly walked up to Kakashi. Looks like Naruto is the center of the attention, Kanoamaru whispered while Kakashi only nodded, not that he minded much. He didn't care much for glory but neither did Naruto. And it belonged to my grandfather Uchiha Madara, Naruto finished his explanation as to why Mayo couldn't touch the fan without dying but he took it out showed it to everybody. Next, Isamu-kun, Irika said and the kid nodded and faced Naruto once again who sighed. Do you really have the Kyubi trapped inside of you? Isamu asked and silence followed his question. I have but why do you ask? Naruto asked curious. How can he fit in there? Don't you get a tummy ache? Isamu asked curious and Naruto laughed. They are naive but funny, Naruto thought before a wild thought occurred in his mind. He wouldn't, Kurama thought as he noticed the face his host had. He is. Kurama thought as he noticed Naruto bit his finger and slam his hand on the ground. Kuchios no Jutsu, Kyubi no Yoko, Summoning Technique, Nine-Tailed Demon Fox, Naruto said slamming his hand on the ground. Chibified version, Naruto added in afterthought as the smoke disappeared to reveal a small nine-tailed fox. Kurama was on the outside world and nothing bigger than a bunny. I'm not amused, Kurama stated as Naruto picked him up and placed him on top of his head. Class, meet the Kyubi, Naruto said and the girl squealed at how adorable the little fox looked. Kakashi was just amused as to how Naruto treated a fox that could wipe out their village in less than a minute. You see, he doesn't take up much space, Naruto said amused and Kurama started growling much in the end the fox was just yipping away. Next, Ichigo-kun, Iruka said and an orange-haired boy nodded. What's the name of your most powerful jutsu, Ichigo asked towards the three shinobi in front of them. Raisingan, Kanoamaru said making a blue ball of chakra appear in his hand. That would be my Raikiri, Kakashi replied as his hand sparkled with chakra. My strongest purely offensive jutsu would be Raitun, Raijin no Ken, Fist of the Thunder God, Naruto stated. Susanoo was considered more of a shield than weapon, not that it didn't pack quite a punch. And the Rinnegan he wanted to keep a secret for as long as he could. Can you show us? Ichigo asked and Kakashi paled. Better not unless you want to turn the village into a crater, Kakashi quickly replied as to not give ideas to Naruto who grinned. All right, next question, Yuki-chan, Irika said and the girl nodded standing up. What can you tell us of Uchiha Madara, Yuki asked and everyone raised an eyebrow. I can tell you that he was bastard for controlling me and if I see him again I'm gonna eat him," the chibi Kyubi growled. Easy there Kyubi-kun, Naruto said making Kurama glare at him. I don't know much about the man since I never met him, Naruto started. I suppose I can tell them a few things that Tusan told me, Naruto thought. For starters he was a proud man. He was never ashamed of flaunting either his clan name or the superiority of the Sharingan. You can say that he was arrogant but he could easily back up his words with his power, Naruto said before another thought occurred to him. Though I don't quite understand why he was called Kanoha's greatest traitor. The only thing I know he did was leaving the village. That hardly calls for such a title, Naruto said in afterthought and everyone got thinking. Naruto had a point, why Madara this great traitor when he simply left the village? Well, he did try to kill the Shodame, Kakashi stated and Naruto nodded. Although Orochimaru left the village and tried to kill the Sandame. Oh please, Naruto said waving his hand, those two hated each other but he would have never come through with it. 
I heard he was big softy on the inside, Naruto said and Kakashi had his eyes widened. Uchiha fucking Madara a softy? Kakashi wondered in thought. If Madara was a softy then what would Naruto call a hard ass? His name alone would bring fear to every nation, Kakashi thought shaking his head. Have you ever wondered why those two never killed each other? Naruto rhetorically asked, they fought countless times as they grew up and old, and they never killed each other. That's because, even though they were enemies, they were like brothers. Neither of them would be able actually land the finishing blow, Naruto explained and Kakashi stared at him. Look at this way, Naruto started, Hashirama was one of the greatest medics to live. Don't you think he would be able to make sure he was dead during his final battle? He saw Madara on the ground and couldn't finish him off, Naruto explained. What more can I tell you? Naruto asked out loud before continuing. He loved his family very much, especially his little brother Uchiha Izuna, Naruto said, and the class and even Iruka listened. It wasn't every day you could hear so much about such old figure. Minato's point of view flashback, Tusan Tusan, a five-year blonde-haired kid ran through the forest yelling to his father. Minato-kun, Madara said as Minato stopped near his father. Come look quick, Minato said and dragged an amused Madara after him. Once they stopped running they were at the entrance of a forest. Look look, Minato said and took a deep breath and suddenly started running towards the tree. As Minato arrived near the tree, he placed his right foot on it, sticking himself to the bark. He then continued running all the way up the tree reaching the top. I finally did it, Minato shouted from the top of the tree. I can see that, Madara said amused at cheerful attitude of his son, and you only took a few days. If you keep this going you will be strong as your old man in no time, Madara said as Minato jumped down and landed in front of him. Really? Minato asked hopefully. Of course, Madara said ruffling Minato's wild hair, you are my son after all, Madara said and both left towards their home where Hanako was preparing dinner. Tusan? Minato asked his father while they were walking home. Madara turned to Minato and motioned him to go on. Do you know why Ka-san is sick? Minato asked slowly. There's nothing for you to worry about Minato-kun, Madara said laughing. Let's just say your mother is, cooking your little brother, Madara said amused when Minato jumped into the air at the prospect of a little brother. Minato didn't have many friends as they lived quite a distance away from the nearby town. Really? Minato asked hopefully and Madara nodded. What's his name? Minato asked curious about his little brother-to-be. Since Hanako-chan named you, I'll be the one naming your brother. He's going to be called Azuna, in memory of my own little brother, Madara said sadly. That bastard of my brother took out his own eyes and gave them to me, Madara thought angrily at the memory of losing his brother. Madara told him that he could still fight even when he was blinded by an enemy. Madara sighed and removed the dark thoughts of his mind, and continued making their way home. Ka-san, Minato, called out. Hanako turned to see both Madara and Minato arriving. She was surprised when Minato rushed her and looked towards the food pan on the oven. When is Izunakun finished cooking? Minato asked and Hanako faltered for a moment before turning to an amused Madara. End flashback, and there isn't much I can tell you about him, Naruto said although he didn't them about this particular episode as it would reveal Minato's identity. Alright next. Iruka didn't manage to finish as Naruto's head snapped upwards as if he felt something. Something's wrong. Fu just activated her marker. Kakashi let Bachan know where I'm going, Naruto said and vanished in a yellow flash. Hmm, Kakashi hummed in thought, he never did say where he was going did he? Kakashi asked. Back with Fu the ground was shaking as both Akatsuki members were frozen staring at the escalating chakra of Naruto. 
He was pissed that the Akatsuki would dare to try and take another bijou, even more that this bijou was sealed inside a friend. Naruto was sick of this Tobi fellow and then, Kakuzu and this silver guy tried to take Fu. This would be their last mistake. Naruto had just declared open season on Akatsuki and he would personally reduce them all to ashes. Naruto didn't even spare the Akatsuki members a glance as he turned his back to them and crouched near Fu. Naruto's eyes flashed silver. Naraka path, Naruto muttered placing two fingers on Fu's forehead. Naruto's fingers glowed green and Fu's skin started regenerating quickly. Her shoulder's wound closed almost immediately. Those eyes, Chomei thought, in fear, to herself deep behind her cage. This human had her father's eyes. She never thought she would ever see those eyes again and, to be fair, it scared her to no end. Those eyes had no limit, they could do anything the wielder so wished. They were called eyes of the gods for a reason, they held no limit. W what? Fu asked as she felt revitalized in under a few seconds. How did you do this? Fu asked curiously as she got up and turned to both Akatsuki members who had their eyes widened. I'll tell you later, Naruto said and turned around, coming face to face with Haydn and Kakuzu. Now I have a couple of worms do deal with, Naruto said darkly as a small smile made its way up his face. Kurama could feel Naruto's emotions, his thrill for battle. Ahahahaha, Haydn laughed as he regained his wits and pointed his scythe towards Naruto. Who's this pathetic mortal? Do you really think you can take us both on? Haydn rhetorically asked. Shut up you fool, Kakuza yelled toward his partner, he is Senja Naruto, the Kanoha no Raijin, Kanoha's thunder god, the Shinobi no Kami. God of the Shinobi, an S-ranked Shinobi with a flea on sight order but above all, Kakuzu said narrowing his eyes at his new opponent Uchiha Madara's heir in Jinchuriki of the Kyubi no Yoko, Kakuzu said as a bead of sweat rolled down his face. Great, Haydn replied, we get to take two Jinchurikis instead of one. We can kill two rabbits with one stone, Haydn laughed. He still doesn't grasp the severity of the predicament we are in, Kakuzu thought to himself. He still remembers the battle he had with Naruto three years ago. Even though Kakuzu was weaker by using the body doubles he still lost, and three years of training could do so much. And now Naruto was standing in front of him. Patiently waiting, stoically looking at him, it scared him to no end. Haydn, Kakuzu said as he gathered his partner's attention, we are leaving, Kakuzu said and got ready to leave. What? Haydn screamed in outrage. You heard what leader Sama said. He's beyond the strength of any of us, Kakuzu said towards his annoying partner. That fool seemed to have a death wish. They are running away just because Naruto shows up? Fu thought to herself wondering just how powerful Naruto was to scare them off. You won't be getting anywhere, Naruto said as a very large purple barrier rose from all sides of the battlefield. You didn't think I was just sitting here still did you? Naruto rhetorically asked, smirking at the panicking face of Kakuzu. He trapped himself with both of them, Fu thought shocked with Naruto's boldness. Was he so arrogant that he thought he could take them both on? Or was he confident in his power? Deep inside Fu, Chomei was completely focused on the battle. If this person could really wield the Rinnegan, then the Akatsuki were no match for him. Enough, Haydn shouted as he rushed Naruto head on, let's kill the bastard, Haydn said as he jumped high in the air and swinged down his scythe. Haydn, stoop, Kakuzu yelled but to no avail as his partner charged Naruto. Haydn's scythe came down in a diagonal arc Naruto ducked and let the scythe pass safely above his head. The scythe buried itself on the ground. Naruto swatted Haydn's hand away from the scythe and brought his knee to his stomach. Haydn's eyes popped out and he buckled in pain. Naruto caught Haydn's neck and raised him into the air with a single hand. 
Do you want to dance? Naruto asked with his Sharingan glowing. Haydn was writhing in pain. He tried to make Naruto release his hand around his neck but he couldn't, Naruto's grip was too firm. Haydn just stayed there, slowly choking to death, except he couldn't die. You are either very brave or very foolish, Naruto said laughing at Haydn's predicament. Naruto turned his attention to Kakuzu but the man was frozen in place and could only look as Naruto slowly choked his partner. Interesting, Naruto thought as he looked towards Haydn. The man was not dying. Naruto shifted his attention towards the necklace Haydn carried. It was a hollow circle with a triangle inside, I've seen that before, Naruto thought to himself. Careful Naruto, Fu yelled from outside the barrier, Chomei says that one is immortal, Fu yelled and Naruto raised an eyebrow looking intently at Haydn. Naruto released Haydn and kicked him the chest sending him flying into Kakuzu. Arg, Haydn screamed in frustration as he crashed into Kakuzu, I'm going to enjoy sacrificing you to Jashin-sama, Haydn yelled and turned to his teammate. Get up you pussy, Haydn said and brought Kakuzu from his thoughts. Who are you calling that? Kakuzu asked in a dangerous voice. You, Haydn said pointing at him, you froze against some teenager, Haydn explained. I froze? Kakuzu thought to himself as made sure to never repeat the same mistake. It won't happen again. We need to work together against him otherwise we will both die, Kakuzu said and Haydn laughed again saying he couldn't die. I remember now, Naruto thought as he was hit with a realization when Haydn said something about Jashin. Naruto read about people that prayed to this god Jashin and, as long they gave him human tributes, this god would grant the humans immortality and advanced regeneration. Turn him into ash and let's see him regenerate from that, Kurama suggested from inside Naruto's mind which he agreed. Either that or I could remove his soul, Naruto replied which the fox also agreed. Naruto would use which one came first when the opportunity presented itself. Naruto bent slightly forward before he disappeared in a burst of speed. Fast, Kakuzu thought as he brought both arms to his face in an X formation. Naruto's fist collided with Kakuzu's arms but he was flinged back nonetheless. Naruto ducked under a horizontal swing from Haydn and channeled chakra into his wrist seal. Naruto's chikuto poofed into existence. Naruto quickly grabbed the hilt and started channeling lightning chakra through it. Naruto did an upward slice and severed Haydn's scythe in half. The three-bladed scythe fell to the ground with Haydn only holding the now worthless metal staff. Naruto smirked as he used his kamui and allowed a compressed wind ball to phase right through him and hit Haydn head-on. Haydn was blasted back while Naruto got away and scathed. Half a silver rib cage appeared around Naruto and a silver arm suddenly sprouted from that. Naruto Susanoo quickly grabbed the light blue mask that sent the wind ball and crushed it into nothingness. The light blue mask fell to the ground in pieces while the black threads dissolved into nothing. Damn it, he already got one of my hearths, Kakuzu thought to himself as his masks regrouped with him. Dotan, Tabe Chikyu, Devouring Earth, Naruto shouted slamming his both hands on the ground. Devouring Earth, one of Hashirama's most powerful jutsu that he taught Naruto. The whole ground started shaking as the earth started breaking and twisting itself. The ground beneath Kakuzu and his masks exploded as several huge jaws of earth rose from the ground to devour him. Kakuzu jumped to sides and up as both he and his masks did their best to avoid being swallowed. Naruto did the jutsu and turned to Haydn. That earth jutsu should keep Kakuzu busy long enough while he dealt with Haydn. Naruto turned towards Haydn and rushed him head on. Haydn pulled his retractable metal spear and parried as best as he could Naruto's blows. Haydn took use of his immortality and allowed Naruto to strike him. Naruto performed a downward slash giving Haydn a large gash on his chest. 
Haydn took advantage of Naruto's blade being almost on the ground and brought his spear high into the air. He brought it down as fast as he could only to phase right through Naruto and bury itself on the ground. Naruto kicked Haydn on the shoulder and he was sent tumbling through the ground. Haydn got up and looked towards Naruto who had both hands on the ground. A golden chain sprouted from the ground near Haydn's foot. Haydn quickly side steeped it and back flipped when another one came from the opposite direction. While Haydn was busy dogging chains, one of Naruto's clones that was powering the barrier saw a mask incoming. Since Naruto's clone had the Rinnegan active they shared their field of vision, giving Naruto 360 degrees of vision around the battlefield. Naruto channeled Chakra the fan on his back. Gunbai barrier technique, Naruto thought in a silvery, Susanoo-like, shield appeared around Naruto blocking a lightning bolt. Naruto rose picking up his fan and, with a quick turn, slammed his fan into the yellow mask and sent her towards Kakuzu. Time to end this, Naruto thought as he channeled more chakra into the earth. The ground shook and ten chains sprouted all at once. Haydn didn't manage to avoid them all and ended snared to the ground on his knees. Kakuzu, Naruto shouted towards his enemy as he stopped his earth jutsu and allowed Kakuzu to look at him. Look closely to your partner, Naruto said and only raised his index finger into the air. Katan, fire style, Naruto said as a small orange light sparkled at the tip of Naruto's finger. Orange chakra could be heard swirling around his finger and started forming some kind of small sphere. Goen Rasengan, Great Flame Rasengan, Naruto said and suddenly the ball of chakra expanded turning almost black with the edges gaining an orange and red hue, forming a ring of flames. It was like Naruto had a mini sun at the tip of his finger. I won't get there in time, Kakuzu thought as Naruto slammed his fire Rasengan into Haydn who was blasted back and rose into the sky in a maelstrom of fire. Haydn screamed as he was being teared apart, limb by limb, until finally being reduced to nothing more than ashes. Naruto shielded his face from the fire tornado in the air. Suddenly the maelstrom of fire ended and there was nothing left. Kakuzu watched in fear as a few ashes floated away in the wind. There was nothing left of Haydn but ashes. He key killed Haydn, with a single jutsu, Kakuzu thought in fear. What monster had they unleashed? If you poke the dragon, Naruto started breaking Kakuzu from his thoughts, be sure you can run away, Naruto said smirking as he made his way towards Kakuzu who braced himself. Enten, Goka Makyaku, Inferno style, Great Fire Annihilation, Naruto said and unleashed a wave of pitch black flames towards Kakuzu. Kakuzu knew very well that he couldn't block this jutsu and his only choice was to dodge. His masks flew high into the air as Kakuzu sunk into the ground. Kakuzu popped out from the ground as he tried to give Naruto an uppercut. Naruto back flipped and tried a horizontal swing towards Kakuzu's raising fist. Naruto was successful and cleaved fours of his fingers. Kakuzu groaned in pain and jumped back regrouping with his three remaining masks. Kakuzu and his masks gathered their chakra and unleashed the elemental dragons. They were Kakuzu's most powerful attack that, when combined, it almost surpassed S rank level. Naruto smiled and simply raised his hand facing the incoming dragons. Deva path, Naruto said as his shifted into his Rinnegan. Shinra Tensei, Naruto said and released a shock wave that collided with the dragons and easily dispelled the technique. Everything was blown backwards, the elemental dragons, the masks and even Kakuzu. Kakuzu spat blood to the ground and shakily got up only to take a step back when he looked into Naruto's eyes. Teetha Rinnegan, it cannot be, he has the same eyes as leader Sama, Kakuzu thought as with hearth going a mile a minute until a realization hit him. The girl was right, we are all dead man walking, Kakuzu thought to himself chuckling and accepting his fate. Several chains shot from the ground snaring everyone to the ground. 
The masks were squirming and trying to get free but to no avail. To think you had the Rinnegan, Kakuzu chuckled as he tried to raise his head and meet Naruto in the eye. Naruto wasn't tired or even injured. All of this was a mistake, he truly is beyond any of us, Kakuzu thought as he watched Naruto extend his right hand forward, with the palm facing upwards. Juryoden, gravity release, Naruto said as purple chakra started swirling in his hand. Moments later a small pitch black sphere formed on his palm. Around the sphere, series of white rings started appearing, orbiting the black sphere. The rings started aligning themselves into a one disc-like shape around the orb. It seemed that Naruto had a black planet in his hand with planetary rings around it, either that or a black hole. Raisin Ringu, spiraling fear wheel, one, Naruto said and didn't even need to throw the sphere. The new Raisengan simply levitated from his hand and flew with high speeds towards the pinned down Kakuzu and his masks. Kakuzu watched in wonder the last thing he would see. As the orb arrived near the enemy, it suddenly expanded in a maelstrom of blackness. The Raisengan expanded and started absorbing and pulling everything towards the center. It really was like a black hole, swallowing everything in his reach. The black hole kept swirling and dragging the masks that tried to fly away. Kakuzu was long gone inside the sphere of doom. The wind was swirling towards the black hole in the middle of the clearing. Rocks and trees were ripped out from the ground due to the attractive force, and lost within it. Nothing within ten meters range from the black hole could ever hope to escape it. Amazing, Fu thought watching the jutsu Naruto had unleashed. She had never seen such jutsu on her life that she wondered if that was ninjutsu to begin with. Once the three masks had been pulled, the black dome started expanding, eating up part of the terrain and almost tripling in size. Suddenly, like a flash before anyone's eyes, the black dome imploded and disappeared leaving nothing behind but a crater that it had created. Two down, Naruto said as he dispelled his clones and the barrier around the field was dropped. Naruto approached Fu who had her jaw on the ground at Naruto's display of power. I should have called you sooner, Fu muttered. Yes, Naruto said nodding his head, you should have, I spent the last three years preparing myself for them, Naruto said and watched as Fu slowly walked up to Shibuki's body and fall to her knees crying. I guess he was important to you, Naruto softly said placing a hand on her shoulder. H he was the only one that liked me, Fu sobbed at the loss of her only friend in this village. What I'm about to do, Naruto said making her face him to hear the seriousness of his voice, tell no one about it understand? Naruto asked and Fu quickly nodded not knowing what he was going to do. Ram Snake Naruto made two hand seals before he closed his eyes and concentrated. It can't be, Chomei thought in disbelief, from inside her host as she watched the events unfold. Ghetto, Outer Path, Rina Tensei no Jutsu, Samsara of Heavenly Life Technique, Naruto said as he started emanating green light. Naruto placed his hand on Shibuki's chest and his body was covered in a green light from head to toe. A few seconds later, the green aura died down and Shibuki started to stir. Fu had her eyes widened when she noticed Shibuki opening his eyes. He was dead, I'm sure of it, Fu thought to herself helping Shibuki up and looking towards Naruto who had opened his eyes to show his Rinnegan. Fu-chan, do not underestimate the power of those eyes, Chomei warned from inside her host. With the Rinnegan, Naruto can do anything he wishes. You are as close to a god as you will ever be, Chomei said and Fu slowly nodded. WWH what happened? Shibuki asked as he raised to his feet. The last thing I remember was that silver-haired guy becoming all black and white, Shibuki explained and looked towards Fu who was wiping away a few tears. You were unconscious from the fight. I called Naruto to help and once he defeated them he healed you, Fu explained discreetly looking towards Naruto who nodded. Well then, you have my deepest thanks Naruto-san. 
You not only saved my village but also Fuchan, Shibuki said giving a small bow as a thank you. Take Fu and go rest. There is something I have to do first. I'll catch up with you later, Naruto said and both Shibuki and Fu nodded and left towards the village. Once they were gone Naruto walked to the middle of the battlefield and crouched near the fingers of Kakuzu that he had sliced earlier. In the middle of the fight, Kakuzu's ring started emanating chakra. It was strange for a ring to give off chakra. Naruto picked up the finger and slowly removed his ring. Naruto turned to ring and noticed the kanji 4 north in it. Not being someone to back down, Naruto placed the ring on his hand and his consciousness was immediately shifted to someplace else. Akatsuki hideout all of the eight members were gathered together as they waited for Kakuzu and Haydn to arrive with Fu, the Jinchuriki of the Nanabai. Kakuzu had sent a message saying that he found the Jinchuriki and that he would proceed with her capture. What's the status of your searches? Payne asked as they patiently waited for Kakuzu and Haydn to arrive at their location. Yeah, we have located the Jinchuriki of the Rokubi, Yudakata, I believe he's called, Daidara said and Payne nodded. What about the Sanbai? Payne asked. According to my spies, Sasori started, the Sanbai is hiding in the lakes around the islands of the Mist Village. If my information is right, after the Kyubi Jinchuriki defeated Yugura, the Sanbai was released but he didn't seal it, Sasori explained and Payne narrowed his eyes. You mean to tell me there is a bijou out there without a host? Payne asked and Sasori nodded. It could prove more difficult to subdue as bijous without host have full access to their abilities. Interesting, Kisame commented. Who's the new Mizukage? Kisame asked curious. Mei Terumi was named the fifth Mizukage shortly after Yugura's defeat, Sasori replied and Kisame frowned. They won't seal the Sanbai then. The QB brat left the Sanbai without a host for a reason and most likely Mei agreed to it. The turtle won't be sealed. Kisame explained. It matters not. I'll capture it myself if need be, Payne said and turned towards Itachi. What about the Gobi and Yanbi? Payne asked and Itachi simply opened his eyes to reveal his blood-red Sharingan. Both of Iwa's Jinchurikis have Sanmin travel rights. They are loyal to their villages but don't have a fixed location. We have the Yanbi's location but the Gobi still eludes us, Itachi stoically replied. Zetsu, work on tracking down the Gobi, Payne ordered. Yes leader Sama, Zetsu replied. In the meantime, Itachi and Kisame will proceed with the Yanbi's capture. Daidara and Sasori will proceed with Yudakata's capture, Payne ordered and both parties nodded. Gah, Kisame shouted, what's taking them so long? Kisame asked as he was bored out of his mind. Payne's eye twitched as he was also tired of waiting for them to deliver. Zetsu, Payne called out. Yes leader Sama, the white Zetsu replied. Go find out why they are taking so long will you, Payne said in a bored tone. Yes lead dash. They will not be coming, everyone flinched at the new voice. All Akatsuki members shifted their attention from Zetsu and towards the new comer who was standing in the place of Kakuzu. The new holographic image had long blonde, waist-length, spiky hair with fangs that framed his face and partially covered his right eye. He also had three distinctive whiskers marks on each cheek. On his back he had a wide fan with three blood-red tomos on each side, it had a long handle with bandages wrapped around the base. The main part of the weapon was light brown with the edges being black. Let's talk, Naruto said smirking with his Sharingan glowing and looking at the shocked faces of every Akatsuki member. See you in the next one.